One of the things I've been asked to uh, include in a video is how to do split on this uh, TS-890. So there's a lot of ways to do it, um, and as ever it's fairly well thought out and quite easy to configure. You've got two VFOs on this radio, so you have VFO A here and VFO B. You can see the A with a chevron to the left, B with a chevron to the right. So currently the frequency in VFO B, uh, VFO -B is 140842 and in VFO A is 7010.43. So if we were to just simply press the split key, the word split comes on, and you see it tells me here what my delta frequency is, and my delta frequency is 7.03.77, and that's in megahertz. So I would be transmitting on 20 meters, and I'm currently receiving on 40 meters. If that's the kind of thing you wanted to do, that's exactly what you can do. Now let's switch split off again, and let's think about a more traditional uh, split operation. So if I was tuned into a CW signal like I've got here and I wanted to call him let's say up to so the easiest way to do that would be to press and hold the split key and press the 2 for 2 KC's up. If I wanted 3 I would press and hold the split key and press 3 KC's up and it does it automatically. If you want a negative offset you press and hold the split key and press the 0 first so 0 2 will give me minus 2 split 0, 4 will give me minus 4 split, 4, 5 in that case gives me up 5, so you can see 7, 10, 7, 15. You can always, when you're in split mode, doesn't matter what how you've got there once you've set it up, the TF set button over here, if you press and hold the TF set it aligns the receiver to the transmit frequency. So if you keep that held down you can now tune around perhaps to find a gap in the pileup or whatever you want to do and as soon as you've decided where you want your transmit frequency to be you let go of that key and the receive frequency goes back to where it was. Another way to set up split mode is to basically tune the VFO to wherever you want the transmit to be so say I wanted to transmit on 7.20 exactly so I do that and then I need to copy that to VFO B so I press and hold the A to B or the AB button and that copies that over to there then I can now retune to my receive frequency and now I'm still in split mode but I've basically programmed the two VFOs separately that's another easy way to do it I just stumbled across some uh, RTTY I thought I'd do a quick video of what it looks like so this is N2WK he's off the back of my beam so he's quite weak uh, but this is RTTY decode mode. You can also extend it to get a bigger view of the decoded text. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, hopefully you'll transmit again, is that you can touch this to get a different view of the tune signal. This is a traditional XY scope that you would see on the old MMTTY software and that kind of thing. Um, and this is a more traditional, I suppose, waterfall and peak audio filter. Um, but the two work, work just as well. I like the fact that you can switch between them. That's my favourite, but... Um, He's obviously stopped transmitting, uh, but it was <laughs> good to catch it while it lasted. So the other thing I have to show you is the use of the <coughs> transmission in the RTTY mode. So if you look on the screen at the moment, you'll see we've got a number of uh, options down here. Memory is the one to look at. So memory is, um, is where you would go about editing and storing individual messages for transmission. I've only got two set up by default. Um, a traditional from my call sign three times and then a TU-509K. Um, if you were to look at a particular message, so I've got this is my message in there at the moment, so let's use the up and down arrows to select different messages. You can then click the message button and you're now able to edit it. As I mentioned previously, you'll see here a little USB dongle. I've got a cheap um, USB wireless USB keyboard connected to the radio. It cost me just under £10 GBP from Amazon and I use that for just about everything. So I can edit this message now and I can put uh, this is a message. And once I've done that I can click save and that's now stored there. If we were to go down one to number four we can type message and we can put this is another message and we can save that. Now once you've done that if we go out of here and you click more and then you click memory more you'll see we've got one two three four more sorry next five six seven eight so those are the different memories that we've got here so mine channel three memory if I press this button here and the radio just transmits that message if we look at it again we can see that the memories are here so let's look at memory channel number four press the four 
This is another message. Now those memory numbers also align with um, the function keys on the keyboard. So if I were to press F3 on my keyboard, and similarly F4, what could be simpler? The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is the IF filters. Now, I've kept the camera close up on the screen so you can see it, but just to the right of the main tuning knob, there's the CW tune key, and then underneath there, there's the IF filter button. Now, every mode that this radio supports has got a separate bank of IF filters. So we're currently in CW mode, so I'm going to press and hold the IF filter. Generally speaking in this rig, if you want to set up the configuration of a functional feature, if you press and hold the button that switches it on, that normally pulls up the configuration screen. So what we've got here is a roofing filter selection, an IF filter selection, and an audio filter selection. And for every mode we've got a filter A, B, and C. Now, CW is the mode that this one is particularly for, and I tend to configure mine to be wide, not so wide, and narrow. And I've got the optional 270 hertz roofing filter in mine. So I've gone from the widest 2.7K, then I've got 500 hertz width, and then I've got the 270 hertz width. Now, if you're not familiar with roofing filters, they're really like, well, they call them roofing filters because they keep all the muck out, and um, like the roof on your house, anything that's outside of that doesn't get in. So they're very, very good at strong signal rejection outside of that particular bandwidth. So if we look at filter A, you select the filter by pressing the filter button, so you show A, B, C, A. You'll also see that you can set up the width and the shift. So when my Y is so my 2.7K, I've got a CW width of a, th of a whole 1000 kc, so it's very wide. Filter B, the width is 500. Filter C, the width is down to 300. So, as I said, I've got wide, not so wide, and narrow. And the, the width is set by the width control over on the right-hand side of the radio, um, but it's remembered with the filter bank, so that every time you're on, on the band in a particular mode, you can easily, by pressing the IF filter button, cycle through filter A, filter B, filter C, back to A, B, C, A, B, C. You can also program the PF keys, the PF A, B and C, to do particular filter selections. Say you wanted to be able to go from filter A to filter C very quickly, you could do that. Um, so that's an example of the CW. If you look at the SSB filters, now I don't tend to use SSB very much, but I've got filter A set up as a 6K roofing filter and the others are just left to default. But if we were to cycle through the filters, you can see the differences that we've got. So we've got a low and high cut 0 to 5000, so that's wide open for basically for FSK type of, uh, not FSK, for WSJT mode, so that's for decoding FT8 and things like that. Filter 2 is much more likely to be for a fairly standard SSB conversation, and filter 3 has just got some low cut in it. Again, it's all configurable, set it up how you want, and it's remembered by mode. So for FSK, for example, which I use quite a lot of RTTY on this radio, again, I've gone very wide, not so wide, and narrow. So once you're in, let's say we put the radio into FSK mode like we are now, you can press the filter and you can see how it alternates from A, B and C. And up here you'll notice the letter that tells you which filter that you've got. So I have filter A width 1.5K, B width 300, C width 300. The roofing filters are changing. So in my case, I've got 2.7K roof, 500 hertz roof, 270 hertz roof. The other thing that's very neat in FSK mode is the APF. <coughs> Excuse me. The APF was traditionally an audio peak filter, which would be used for CW. If you actually turn that on in FSK mode or RTTY mode, you'll find that it, what it actually does is put quite a deep notch between the mark and the space. And that really helps sometimes if you've got overlapped signals in a very, very busy band. That's a really excellent feature that works really, really well. ICOM have the concept of a twin peak filter, which I think is more of an amplification of the mark and space frequencies. Whereas this, the Kenwood definitely puts a notch in the middle of the, of the two signals so that there's, it attenuates anything that's in between.